the assumptions of linearity and normality should be confirmed prior to using linear regression to compare the variables. This was an actual peer review comment from one of the first papers I wrote using linear regression. It's easy to be confused and frustrated with this type of comment, especially after you've spent countless hours running your experiments and writing up the results. However, in this case, the reviewer was right. When linear regression is used for data analysis, the analyst must prove that the data properly fit the linear model. This is called regression diagnostics, and it's a necessary part of any linear regression analysis. Sound difficult? Yeah, it does. It sounds difficult, but it doesn't need to be that hard. My name is Jeffrey Frank. I'm a statistician and the CEO of Stat59. In this video, I'm going to show you how to that adding four simple plots and one simple statistical test can help you build a slam dunk linear regression model. So what is regression diagnostics? Let's use an example of someone who might be using a linear regression test. So here we have a researcher who wants to study the use of C-peptide to predict the severity of diabetes. So she measures the C-peptide level in 43 diabetic patients, and at the same time she measures their base deficit, which is a measure of the severity of their diabetes. And her hypothesis is that the C-peptide level can be used to predict the base deficit. So here we can see her data. What she has done is we have plotted a linear regression equation using this data. You can see the plot of the data. The plot shows the base deficit on the y-axis and the level of C-peptide on the x-axis. And just a cursory look at this data, we can suspect that there is indeed some type of relationship where as C-peptide gets higher, the base deficit seems to get greater. Here you can see she's plotted the regression line and her conclusion is that there is a linear relationship between the level of C-peptide and the base deficit. And that C-peptide holds promise to predict the severity of diabetes. At this point she submits her, journal to her article to a journal for publication and she gets back this peer review comment. The assumptions of linearity and normality should be confirmed prior to using linear regression to compare C-peptide and base deficit. Now at this point, our researcher is probably frustrated and confused. She has spent hours on her work and she may not even know exactly what this means. I'm going to show you how simply adding four quick plots in one quick statistical test can help you get yourself out of this situation. And if you're using linear regression as a tool and you're not routinely including these diagnostic plots, you will eventually get this peer review comment. This is all about regression diagnostics. So regression diagnostics are used to prove that the linear model, the line, actually fits the data because if the line does not actually fit, then accurate predictions cannot be made with the model and a different model should be tried. Anytime linear regression is used, regression diagnostics is, are necessary. And simply adding four plots in one test will work in almost all cases. Just before we proceed, I want to make a distinction here between simple linear regression and multiple linear regression. So simple linear regression is much like this example that we're using. In the example, we're comparing deficit and C-peptide. And we're trying to create a model for the data that allows us to, to predict the base deficit based on the C-peptide. This is simple linear regression. It looks usually between for the correlation between two variables. Now multiple linear regression is when we have more than one variable as the independent variable. So here we would have, let's say she was trying to look at predicting base deficit using age, C-peptide, and the patient's BMI. So here we would have a multiple linear regression. And this becomes important. The principles that I'm about to show you are exactly the same for simple and linear regression. Sometimes how we're visualizing them in our mind can actually be a bit more tricky. 
basics of regression diagnostics are the use and analysis of residuals. Now the residuals are the measurement of the distance from the predicted value, so in this case the line, to the measured value which is the dot. Okay, so here again we have this plot of base deficit on the y-axis and C-peptide on the x-axis. You can see that, I'm just going to use the example of the level of C-peptide of 5, and we had a couple, a couple observations here. We can see that there's an observation varying from around minus 12 all the way up to close to 0 at the 5 the C peptide of 5 level. But the model predicts about minus 8. So the residuals for each of those dots is simply calculated by subtracting the measured value from, or the, sorry, the predicted value from the measured value. So, and often we standardize these. So what we would do is we would take all these residuals, we would calculate them, and we put them on a curve with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. So what we would expect to find is if the line is an excellent fit, then all of our observations would actually lie right on the line and we would have a bunch of residuals that equal zero. And if there's a good fit, of course, there'll be some variability, but we would expect them to follow a normal distribution. And that's the analysis of residuals. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to show some simple plots to display the residuals that you can use in your own project. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to plot the standardized residuals versus the value of x or the factor or the independent variable, however you call it. So here the, we plot the residuals against the measured value of the independent variable. What we expect to see is the residuals are all about the same for every value of x. Okay, so in this plot we see that the residuals all kind of hover around and we don't see a big difference in the values of the residuals on the C-peptide levels from 3 all the way up to 7. They all sort of form this band across. We expect almost all the residuals to be between minus 2 and 2, which we see. We see one residual kind of hanging right on the edge of the minus 2. And we have to remember, this is single linear regression. If we were doing this for multiple linear regressions, we would actually plot the residuals for each level of the different regression factors. So in the case of multiple regression using BMI and age, we would plot the residuals versus age, the residuals versus BMI, and the residuals versus C-peptide. Now, she's going to plot this in her, re in her results, and in the discussion, she will state that the analysis of the standardized residuals plotted versus each level of the factor supports a linear model. Plot number two. In plot number two, we are going to plot the residuals versus the fitted values from the regression equation. And again, we should see that the, same that the residuals are about the same for all fitted values. And again, most residuals should be between minus 2 and 2. And so here we have the residuals versus the fitted values. And again, we're able to say in our discussion that the plot of residuals versus fitted value supports the linear model. Our third plot is to plot the fitted values versus the observed values. So here, what we should see is a straight line with a slope of 1. We, it's, and what we see here is, once again, the fitted values versus the observed deficit. And we see not exactly a straight line, but we certainly see that the, they are very equal based on the values of the observed deficit. And then finally, our plot number four, which is the normal probability plot of the residuals. If you've never seen normal probability plots, they can be, seem a little bit confusing. But basically what we see is the standardized residuals on the y-axis, what we actually saw, and on the x-axis, the theoretical, what we should see based on the normal assumption assuming that our residuals should follow a normal distribution. So you can see that there are 
plotting software has drawn a faint line, a faint straight line, and that's what we would expect to see. What we do see in this area is that we, at the higher part of the standardized residuals, we do see a few sort of tailing off. We see some deviation from the line. But in general, when we wrote up the discussion, we would say that in general, these residuals seem to follow approximately a normal probability distribution. Now, one of the things we might ask here is, can we just prove using some statistical testing that the residuals are normal? Well, the truth is we can. We could use statistical testing to show normality, but usually we don't. Usually what we do is we use these four plots and in the discussion, we describe if the residuals appear to fit the plots. So here we saw that adding these four simple plots is enough to allow us to analyze the residuals, to do our regression diagnostics, and prove that our data actually follow a linear assumption. In addition to these plots, though, we can add one simple statistical test. The test we're going to use here is a lack of fit test. And the test basically compares, in a rather complicated manner, two sources of variance. The first is the pure error, which is the variance that is not due to the model, but is inherent in the observations. So we can think about this, again, in the context of our sample data. So our sample data compared base deficit to C peptide. Well, we could assume that C peptide doesn't 100% exactly predict your deficit. There's going to be some error there just by lab measurements and by the fact that there's chaos in our bodies. That's the pure error. Now, the lack of fit, on the other hand, is the error that we have introduced when we built our model. And the lack of fit test compares those two sources of error. Now, one of the things that is a bit peculiar about using the lack of fit test is that it does require replications of observations on some level of y for at least one value of x, which that means for practical purposes in our analysis of C peptide and base deficit, we require at least that some of the patients, there was more than one with a particular level of C peptide. Okay. This becomes important if you're designing your experiment. If you're designing an experiment and expecting to use regression, then you have to make sure that you have some repeats of certain levels of your factor. So let's look at our sample test. So here, our researcher has introduced the lack of fit tests. And what we would like to see is that the residual sum of squares for lack of fit is small compared to the residual sum of squares for the pure error and we should get a small value of our F test, and small values are good. Now, if the, P, the F value is small, paradoxically, the P value tends to be big. Now, if the P value is small and significant, it argues that the lack of fit test has shown that the model is not precisely fitting the data, and that may require exploring other models. So here, our researcher would be forced to conclude that there is a evidence of significant lack of fit. We have a p-value of 0 0.02355, and that there is some evidence that the model does not fit the data completely. And we would just need to talk about in our discussion that there are some limitations to the model and that it probably needs to be confirmed on a larger data set. So now that we have seen how these four plots and this one simple statistical test can work together, how do we pull this into one package for your project? Here we can see a simple checklist that tells you exactly what to do. So in simple regression and in multiple regression. In simple regression, we're going to start with the scatter plot. That was, for this case, the plot of the base deficit versus the level of C-peptide. Now you'll note that in multiple regression, when you have more than one, than one independent variable, more than one factor, these plots can be either difficult to make, they form either a contour plot or a three-dimensional plot if you have 
two variables, or if you have more than two variables, it's effectively impossible to plot a four-dimensional line. So multiple regression, regression, you probably won't have a scatter plot. We can add the fitted line to the scatter plot for simple regression, which can look very beautiful and is easy to understand. We plot the residuals versus the values of x. We plot the fitted versus observed values. We plot the normal plot of the residuals, and then we add the goodness of fit test. Then in our discussion, we simply talk about how well or poorly our data fit the residual plots and about the p-value of the goodness of fit test. That is all it takes to effectively prove the linear regression hypothesis for use in your data. So in this video, we saw that you simply using four quick plots and one simple statistical test can help you supercharge your regression model and wow the reviewers with your regression hypothesis. My name is Jeffrey Frank. I'm a statistician and the CEO of Stat59. If you would like to see how the Stat59 web app can help you quickly and cost-effectively perform your own linear regression study, please come visit us at our website at www.stat59.com.